The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us worship God.
Are there any other announcements? Well, then won't you stand with me in body or spirit? Here comes Pat and John. <laughs> um, and let us join our voices responsibly in our call to worship. From where does our help come? Our help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Who keeps us in our going out and our coming in? The Lord is our keeper, who is with us always. The Lord Jesus Christ is with us and for us in all things. Let us sing number 263, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Gracious God, we confess that we do not meditate on your commands and teachings all day long. We do not keep your word before us always and in all things. Instead, we turn away from your demanding truth and wander toward easier options. 
Forgive us, we pray, for pursuing our own desires rather than yours. Forgive us for growing weary in following you, for failing to pray and for tirelessly for justice, for losing hope in your real power to transform the powers of this world. Tune our ears to the sound of your justice. Turn our hearts to your commandments and word of grace. Do not remember our sin. But remember your mercy forever. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Yeah, there's a blank for back there. I put him in the bathroom and I was trying to do my hair. 
time before my prayer. Won't you lift these names and the ones that are known only by you and God up to the mercy seat because God hears each and every prayer. Let us Merciful God, powerful and wonderful, eternally present and graciously close, we are grateful for what you have given us in Jesus Christ, life and love without end. Prompted by your spirit and encouraged by your faithfulness, we lift to you the cares and concerns of our hearts, the burdens and the worries of our lives. We pray that the sick would be healed, that the broken would be mended, that the mournful would be comforted. We pray that warriors would yield to peace, that leaders would gain wisdom that the forsaken would be gathered up. We pray that the sorrowful would be consoled, that the poor would be lifted up, that the anxious would be released. We pray for children in their growing and for youth in their seeking. We pray for those making new starts and for those nearing a journey's end. We pray for those facing hard choices and for those enduring painful consequences. We pray for those filled with bitterness and for those who are just empty. We pray that your church might claim its potential that the body of Christ might be strengthened by its many parts, that the work of ministry might be done with joy and thanksgiving. We pray for the courage to follow Jesus, for the faith to trust your promises to us, for the vision to see your kingdom among Amen. us even now. We pray for all that you would have us pray. We pray for those for whom no one prays. We pray all these things in the name of the one ceaselessly praying for us, Jesus Christ our Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever, trusting in Christ. We offer together the prayer he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Okay. 
Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of man and the seed of beast. And it shall come to pass that I have watched over them to pluck up and break down, to overthrow, destroy, and bring evil. So I will watch over them to build and to plant, says the Lord. In those days, they shall no longer say, the fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. But everyone shall die for his own sin. Each man who eats sour grapes, his teeth shall be set on edge. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not like the covenant which I made with their fathers when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant which they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it upon their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each man teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their inequity, and I will remember their sin no more. lesson continues in Luke's gospel and as I was studying for it this last week um, one of the uh, commentators uh, that also we kind of studied together on the on the internet <laughs> said well at least now there's a parable we can understand and I went what? Um, I think there are others that I can understand better than this one in the 18th chapter, the first eight verses. Jesus told his disciples a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said... In a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while, he refused, but later said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet when the Son of Man comes, he will find, will he find faith on earth? Amen. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks. 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 One of the other people in this little midrash group said 
she was in Target, and there was a little boy, maybe five, who asked his mother for a baseball bat. And she, the mother said, you already have a baseball bat. He said, that's my t-ball or little league or whatever bat. I want one to have at home. Well, the mother did not relent, but for some reason, this woman who was relaying the story said it got to the point where if her mother, if his mother was not going to buy him a bat, I wanted to. So finally, as the mother was nearing the checkout line, once again, the little boy asked her, please, can I have a baseball bat? The mother said, as all good mothers do, call your father. <laughs> so he did. And the father said, yes, he could get a baseball bat, which just delighted the little boy. So yet another um, conversation involving pestering. The mother didn't exactly relent, but she just passed it off to a higher power, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Once upon a time, in a kinder, gentler time, doctors made house calls. The milkman delivered milk and eggs and cheese to the house. And attorneys would adjudicate cases for others than just the rich and the famous. But times change. And now we go to the doctor, and if we're lucky, we might just see a nurse practitioner. I know folks that have gone to the doctor, waited for long lengths of time, who, when the doctor finally came into the room, never even bothered to look directly at them. Way too busy to see who he or she was treating. Milk and eggs now come from the store. A convenience for many, but it's just another indicator of how we've had to hurry things in life up. And attorneys now only willing to tap dance here because my youngest son-in-law is an attorney and we've talked about that. It's the buck almighty that drives most practices. Small claims court for the do-it-yourselfers, even that has gotten to the place where you need an attorney to help you. So what are the not so rich and famous supposed to do when there's an issue that needs to be resolved? Well, if you're fortunate enough to be located where TV shows like The People's Court, Judge Judy, Judge Matthias, Judge Alex, Judge Joe Brown, America's Court with Judge Ross, Swift Justice with Nancy Grace, that's just to name a few, are films you might be in luck. That's become a very big business for the judges, and the cases do get settled. But how about all those folks who were scammed after Hurricane Hugo came marching into South Carolina doing every bit as much damage as General Sherman? I was working in Georgetown at the time, and heard about many things that were happening. People were asked for upfront payments for roof repairs, which either never happened, 
weren't completed or were poorly done. So for several years, many houses still had that all too familiar blue tarps covering all or part of their roofs. Paint jobs were done with thinned out paint and in a hurry and after the first rain, the paint washed off. Attorneys were too busy with bigger ticket clients and didn't want to chase down the scammers. After all, that was just a few thousand dollars. Jesus preaches and teaches the love of God. He tells us that God cares about us, loves us, will come speedily to our aid. But, he says, will the Son of Man find faith when he comes? Jesus tells the story of a widow who comes to the court to ask for justice. The judge is cold and uncaring, with no respect for God or man. He sloughs her off, but she comes back again and again, gradually wearing down his resistance until in disgust he decides to listen to her to get her off his back. Now, Jesus is not saying that God is like that judge, and if you just keep praying, God will give you what you ask for. Rather, he's saying, if this uncaring judge can be worn over by persistence, think of the contrast to God's loving care and how quickly God will come to your aid. And if you persist in prayer, you will be continually aware of God's presence and God's care for you, and you will celebrate and give thanks. Do not lose heart. God is there for you. Turn to God, and God will answer great message. And even though we give that message and even though we preach it and teach it and proclaim it and promise it, will people listen? Jeremiah tried his best to get through to them. Jesus tried his best to get through to them. I try my best, but there are a heck of a lot of people who did not and will not hear. I'm reminded of last Easter on the Saturday of the Holy Weekend watching kids and their parents gathered for an Easter egg hunt at my husband's church, Providence Presbyterian. I wondered aloud whether those kids and their parents cared about the message of Easter and the magnificent saving truth of it. My fear is that they sort of dismiss the story, slough off the possibility of Jesus' resurrection, don't want to burden their children with ancient fables, parables, but the Easter bell. Now there's a life enriching teaching that you must pass on to your children. Important to get them out, to get their share from the Easter Bunny. 
will the Son of Man find faith on earth? Those of us who have found faith are charged with the responsibility of passing it on, spreading the message, planting seeds of hope, praying persistently. So let God write these words on your heart. Pray always and do not lose heart. Proclaim the message. Be persistent. Whether the time is favorable or unfavorable, convince, rebuke, and encourage with the most utmost patience in teaching. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything. But in everything, by prayer and thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. A promise. And the people said, Amen. 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 And now won't you stand with me? And in body or spirit, so stand with me in body or spirit, and let us affirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. Christians, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. At the very day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With gratitude for God's faithfulness and with thanksgiving for all we have received, let us always remember to bring our gifts to God.
make his face to shine brilliantly upon you. And may you this day and all days know and feel God's peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.